a mask or not to wear a mask? That seems to be a crucial question as we think about a post-lockdown coronavirus world. But the advice appears somewhat confusing. Do not recommend that the general public wears masks. Task Force recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public, se public settings. This is voluntary. I don't think I'm going to be doing it. We know that our frontline doctors, nurses and care workers need them as part of protective equipment to keep them safe and to stop the virus spreading. But what about the general public? In this video, we're going to see how effective masks are and whether they're crucial to our future. Now let's start with this. The issue is not clear cut or simple and yet some think it is. Look at this image that did the rounds on the internet. It shows the number of COVID-19 cases in various countries, and it suggests that those nations where people wear masks in public have managed to control the virus better. Now that's a completely flawed reading of the graph. It's a gross oversimplification. Of course, those mask wearing countries, as they've been highlighted, have all sorts of other measures in, uh, in place to help control infection. Experts generally agree that a package of measures are the key to suppressing the spread of COVID-19. Face masks don't work alone, nor does social distancing alone, nor does just washing your hands. And remember, that graph points out Japan, which is actually struggling with the coronavirus outbreak. Japan is the latest country to declare a state of emergency. Their government was posting masks to people only a few weeks ago. So even though Japan saw the public wearing masks en masse, it appears to not have helped. Indeed, you ultimately can't just take one particular measure amongst many and say that's the key one. When you have a multifaceted um, strategies, i.e. many different things are happening simultaneously, you can't actually unpack that. Take a recent study published in The Lancet that looked at Hong Kong during coronavirus. While the authors argue that face masks for the public should actively be encouraged, they added that they could not identify which measure was potentially the most effective in suppressing the virus, be it face masks, border restrictions or testing and tracing. There hasn't been enough research done on face masks to give us a conclusive answer now on whether they would help or not. So why is there no clear evidence to show masks work? Well, firstly, it's very difficult to do a randomised controlled trial on face mask wearing in the wider public because of the huge number of variables involved. I can test a proper surgical mask in a laboratory with doctors and nurses because I can control the setting and the people using the mask know exactly how to use them. But take that to the wider community and a whole range of issues enter the fray. What type of mask are all those different people wearing? How often are they wearing it? Are they putting it on right? Has it been washed properly? It's very haphazard, it's very random, it's a very difficult thing to research. And then you get into the middle of a pandemic, does that mean people behave more scrupulously or less scrupulously? We don't know. That all makes it very difficult to do a controlled experiment with clear results. And even those in favour of masks for the public admit we may never get a definitive test. You can't say to 100 cities, nobody in your cities are allowed to use masks, and then say to another 100 cities, everybody in your cities are allowed to use masks during a pandemic. Um, to do so would be highly unethical. Secondly, COVID-19 is a very new virus and we're still not 100% sure about how it's transmitted. For example, the virus could spread through large respiratory droplets when you sneeze or you cough, or they could pass through small respiratory droplets, like what you emit when you speak. What is infectious? Is it the larger droplets or is it the smaller aerosol droplets? This is a new virus and we actually don't know the answers to any of those questions. We actually need to bring together um, the science of materials, uh, the science of um, dynamics, and we need to bring together behavioural science. There's not one bit of science that has the answer to this. So there's no definitive evidence for the use of face masks being worn by the general public. But there are other concerns about the consequences of asking the public to wear face coverings. Firstly, there's shortages. We've all heard stories from the UK and elsewhere about the lack of protective personal equipment for healthcare workers on the front line. The worry is that that shortage could be exacerbated if you tell the public to wear masks. You'd need them at every supermarket, a ready supply of high quality surgical masks, with someone showing you how to put them on properly. And this would be a big, big, big undertaking for uncertain benefits at a time when NHS and particularly social care and other places are struggling to get the equipment they need. And the concern is that face masks will stop people doing what they've already been practicing. The idea is that telling people to wear a face mask will give people a false sense of security. And it might even make those people who should be staying at home venture out into public. That people would use it as an excuse not to socially distance, not to stay at home when they're ill. Following on, as countries start issuing guidance and face masks for the public, there's a difference in what they're saying should be worn. Spain has seen police hand out surgical masks on 
for public transport. Yet in the United States, the advice is that even a scarf or a homemade covering will be sufficient. Some countries are making face masks mandatory in public. Others are saying it's advisory. That can also send out a mixed message. It sends out a message, oh, maybe they matter, maybe they don't. No, no, no. It really, really, really matters that we, that we interrupt transmission of this virus. It really matters. And I do think half-hearted attempts don't, don't send out a good message. I think they send out a lack of clarity. I think they send out, a, well, it might matter, it might not. No, this really matters. Despite the lack of any clear-cut evidence, many countries are now encouraging people to wear face masks in public. Even Gloria Estefan's getting in on it. Put on your mask when you go out in public. Put on your mask. Help save the world from COVID. So let's start with the argument from the CDC in the United States. They point out that recent studies show a significant proportion of people with coronavirus lack symptoms and can transmit the virus. And that even those who do eventually develop symptoms can spread the virus before they show any signs of having it. This means that the virus can spread between people interacting in close proximity. For example, coughing, speaking, or sneezing, even if those people were not exhibiting symptoms. In light of this new evidence, CDC recommends and the task force recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public, public settings where other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. And remember, that means the mask is there mainly to stop you from infecting someone else, rather than to protect you from being infected. But that will only work if everyone on a bus or a train is wearing a mask. If some aren't and potentially have the virus, then it can still be spread. That's why some proponents of masks say it should be mandatory. Well, it means it helps everybody if everybody wears one. So if you go out, uh, you know, on the train and the other passengers on the train or some of them are not wearing a mask, but you are, and uh, some of them are infected and they're talking and droplets are coming out of their mouth, they absolutely kind of infect you. Whereas if all the other passengers are wearing a mask, it's pretty unlikely they're going to affect you. The Lancet report into Hong Kong argued that they could be particularly effective in dense cities where mask wearing is widespread. We have a very busy city, a lot of people mixing every day on public transport, in offices, there's a lot of crowded areas and everybody in Hong Kong is wearing masks. We have 99% mask usage. And I think that contributes. And those in favour of public face masks counter the argument that people may stop practising other social distancing measures by asking, well, what's the evidence for that? The argument that if we introduce face coverings that people will stop washing their hands that they will uh, start going out and partying and doing all sorts of things that, that, that currently they're not doing. I, I don't think there's any evidence for that. And again, these proponents do understand that masks are not a simple solution and that they should be adhered to with other measures. We have seen numerous countries around the world change their guidance on face masks in public. L'immense majorité des transmissions n'est pas arrêtée par les masques. Il est probable que s'agissant des transports publics, s'agissant de ces lieux où la densité est mécaniquement assez forte, euh, il soit obligatoire pour les utiliser de porter euh, un masque euh, grand public. This does not show muddled thinking. More that new evidence is coming out, being assessed, and countries are making their own decisions. And they're all not issuing guidance on face masks alone, but alongside other measures. There are no clear-cut answers to how useful face masks are for the wider public. We are not like healthcare workers who are exposed to the virus 24-7. And that's why the guidance is clear. They need masks along with other PPE. We may never get definitive answers on public face masks due to the variables involved that make a randomised controlled trial really difficult. As more countries change their guidance, we may get a larger pool of evidence from across the globe to make our thinking a little clearer. But the common theme will always be that face masks for the public are but one measure among many. It alone is not the solution. Mm -hmm.